Look, uh, trekking is actually very easy these days. I know a lot of our trekkers uh, feel trekking is not too easy, but it is frankly so easy because it's it's just a question of going online, finding an organization like India Hikes, finding the trek that you want to do, selecting it and preparing for it and going on it. When I was young, I wish it was like that. It wasn't. We are starting the Kutti Pass trek from Haro. There is no more uh, vehicular traffic. It's another. Trekking was extremely difficult and the crux of the difficulty was I didn't know which trek to do, where to do it, who to go it and how to even do it. Information about trekking was non-existent. And in this context is where the whole story of India High starts. Before I tell you this story of India Hikes, I need to take you back to my childhood. But that played a very strong influence in what actually India Hikes is today. When I was around maybe 19 years old, then I came across a comic book. And it was a comic book which was the Tintin in Tibet. And that comic book gripped my imagination like nothing could. Because in that one story was a story of bravery, courage, loyalty and the Himalayan mountains. And it was a fascinating story. And it left a deep impression. And around the same time is my next second influence which came in my life, which is my father's work. My father was working in the bank. And part of his work was to go on inspection duties. And my father would always choose inspection duties in the remotest corners of our country. Ladakh, Himachal Pradesh, Lahul and Spiti. Uh, Uttarakhand, Kashmir and going to these places with my father while he was in his inspection duty kind of had a very strong impact on me and when my father was at work I would very often trail off to see what is behind this hill or what is behind uh, that hill and that's how combined with this mysteries and this wonderful world that Tintin in Tibet had created and actually seeing it for real life and seeing that it is exactly like that or even more is where my love for the outdoors came. I come from Mysore and it's a little unusual for anybody from Mysore to be so deeply connected with trekking. But it all started because of my school, uh, which was very progressive because uh, most of our excursions would be on hikes nearby the city. And as a young child, I really loved those hikes. The experience gave me a high and um, forever I wanted to do more treks. Um, I think when I was around uh, in my class like 6th or 7th, my family took us on a trip to the Himalayas and uh, while researching for this trip, my eyes went on Valley of Lars on the map and uh, we went very close to the base of Valley of Lars and um, I had earmarked in my head that when I grew up, I'm going to do this trek. So by the time I was in my mid-twenties, I was already organizing my own treks with my friends to the Himalayas. I went straight away to the Himalayas. But there is where we started hitting roadblocks. We would do go two days in a trek and then find there's a stream which is flowing, which was not there in our uh, collective information by then. And the stream has water up to here. We can't cross it. Or we find a snowy section which is so steep and this was not in our knowledge now we have to come back from that 13 or 14,000 feet. So information about trekking was so scarce that it was very difficult to put a trek together. The only information was, you know, one small piece of a jigsaw puzzle. It would take us months to put this information together. And frankly, we got a lot of joy out of doing it. It was a lot of fun. But uh, when I came down to mid-30s, when I was around in my mid-30s, I realized that I was absolutely drying out in the kind of information I had about treks, where we could go as friends uh, together. And I was wondering, what do I do about it? I was going to find a problem finding the next trek, but in a country, trekking would never grow if this was the biggest problem of trekking. 
the problem of information. And I knew that without a proper guide, nobody can trek. So in the year around 2007, I believe, my friend and I, my friends, we put together an expedition to the Rupkund Lake in Uttarakhand. High altitude trek, 15,750 feet. Lot of mystery and stories and enigma surrounding that trek. And we did this trek. But when I was doing this trek, I was very conscious that I want to put this information back for people to use it and trek, do the trek on their own. And that's exactly what I did. After we came back from the trek, I kind of documented this trek. I made a guide out of it. And during my research for doing Valley of Lars, I started coming across a few more blogs on different treks that could be done. Uh, one big, uh, one big trek that fascinated my uh, imagination was the Rupkund trek. And um, I started researching more on Rupkund, and I kind of stumbled upon Arjun's blog. That blog kind of detailed the trek. It, it made the trek come alive in front of my eyes. Uh, he had also written about the experiences of people, how they go, went through uh, the meadows, uh, the high altitude, the problems they faced, the challenges they overcame. So everything was like uh, very visual and I was all geared up that this has to be my next trek. What this guy did was it opened people's eyes on the possibilities of doing high altitude trekking on their own. Mind I'm stressing on the word on their own. That guide opened up the world in our country that such places at all existed. They always imagined such locations were possible only in the Alps. And then they saw that such locations were not only possible in our country, but they could also do it on their own. It was very empowering and they started doing it. They started getting in touch with those people who I had mentioned in, on the, in that guide and using the services to do the Rupkun trek on their own. And they did. To do this, I went and posted a comment on Arjun's blog itself to say, okay, I, we are a group of small group of people who want to do this trek. Is there anybody who would like to trek with us so that the cost could come down? And uh, to my uh, wildest of surprises, Arjun himself wrote back saying he, he has a group of people who are going to the road contract if, if I would be willing to join them. And for me from there it was no looking back. On the trek itself, we spoke a lot about the India Hikes project. It was a project back then and I wanted something like this to take off because nothing like this existed in our country. To make these uh, mighty and beautiful Himalayan mountains accessible to um, a new generation of people like me in the country who were looking at uh, doing adventurous things and in a way maybe going beyond trekking itself. But there was another fascinating thing which was happening on the side. The local people over there, it impacted them even more, this guide. Because they started calling me and asking me, Sir, kya ho rahe idhar? Why are so many people coming and why are there so many people coming referencing only you? What they're experiencing was very fascinating. That now, they, have, they were not only taking people on the Rupkun trek, they were giving work to others because they couldn't handle the number of people who were coming there. And I remember the words which have, they, they used to say, Sir, this is a chamat car. I'm taking myself, I'm giving my kids work, and I'm giving my children work, and I'm giving my children work in private school. And I was thinking, here is a guide which was published online, and just because it had credible information, it was changing the lives of trekkers and it was changing the lives of the local people over here in such a big way. And that, for me, was India X. The same thing today. Nothing has changed. We still do that. We gather information. There's an entire team which is putting this information together and we are conducting tracks.
and we are documenting trails. Yes, today we are the largest trekking organization because people love the way we trek, because they see the trek not as a place to go to A or B, but to have a life-changing transformation on the treks. And that's the design of India Hikes. And that's why I guess we are the largest in our country.